So howdy folks, welcome to Morpher Sun Hill 2 Remake. Black Shadow here, we're about to make our way to Rosewater Park in the other world. After having cleared through Brookhaven and having had a pretty fun adventure through the streets so far, it's not been too bad. I mean, I guess that's come off the back of Brookhaven, which at times is pretty damn brutal. While well, there is quite a lot of enemies and such out in the streets here, at least there's some room to maneuver a little bit, you know, and kind of... You don't have to get stuck involved in fighting everything, which is kind of what it should probably be. Anyways, we need the wrench to make our way through the gate. We're still looking for the key, which is in the Rosewater Park, and uh, the fun that'll probably entail. Should be fun. But yeah, the uh, the trip through um, you know the the other world site here has been been all right, been fine. Um, it's just like looking at hello. That's that's probably bad. Well, get the hell out of here. I don't know if that thing can do bad stuff to me. The answer is... The answer is I don't want to find out. <laughs> All I know is that they are doing bad things and uh, I don't want to be here anymore. Better safe than sorry, you know? That's what VA Gaming's taught me. We're back. Under... rather different circumstances than the first time. I think that's a... It's a fair way to describe this. <laughs> Describe the situation. Again, still kind of curious to see how much ground we'll be allowed to retread potentially. And also, what surprises might be waiting in store for us still. You never quite know with a game like Silent Hill. Patrick Chester, son of Edward, he fought and died for the people of liberty and for all of our tomorrows. His memory lives on. What a... what a great guy. Dare I say, might be a better guy than James. <laughs> just, uh... just gonna throw the one out there. Anyways, nothing else for us to do in here. Let's, uh, let's move on. I have a feeling I know where we're going to find our key. Hmm. Actually locked. Now that I didn't expect. My best guess is that there was... Wasn't there like a gate over here? That I couldn't open the first time? I gotta say, somehow, this place feels more unsettling 
because there's no enemies about. You know what I mean? Of course, we're back here. Where we first met uh, Maria. My assumption was that we'd go back to where we met Maria, and that's where we'd find what we're looking for. And it appears that that is not the actual case. So, gotta work out. Angela? Are you... Are you feeling better? This place is different from what I remember. I guess... Things never really stay the same, do they? Well, I guess not. I don't, I don't think she's here anymore, James. Who? My mama. She doesn't. She doesn't want to see me anymore. Why would you think that? Anyway, I'm happy to see you. <laughs> happy to see me? Alive, I mean. Oh, yeah. I better get going. You still don't want me to go with you? If we stick together, we might just make it out of here. Out of where? Uh -huh. This town. Silent Hill. Fine. Okay. Oh, uh, you didn't happen to see a little girl around here, did you? A little girl? Yeah, I. Angela? The irony is he's probably sitting there thinking, man, there's some real messed up people in this place, isn't there? Patient buried it here. I knew, but did nothing. It made me uneasy to have such a thing near. I was looking for truth. I was looking for tranquility. 
I also saw that thing. I fled, but the old society was sealed. No one dares to approach that place. Now, I offer you the key. If you still do not wish to stop, James, I pray to the Lord to have mercy upon your eternal soul. Not, not ominous at all. And of course, that is our next destination. Silent Hill Historical Society. Interestingly, this is the original map. I guess we have left the Otherworld version. It is the original, the, the first version we came back. It's just nighttime now. Okay. Well, that's good. It means I might have the opportunity to actually do some cool things. And that would be nice. Also, I assume that somewhere around here was the statue... Somewhere around here, or might have been in actual Rosewater Park itself with like the information for the hospital. It's it's fine. So, Silent Hill Historical Society is up Nathan Avenue, and it's a fair old journey up there. But we have got plenty of business to attend to beforehand. Now the streets might be absolutely littered with pain and misery, and I do not discount that that could well be the situation we find ourselves. At least we won't see it coming, right? So, first question. Is this still here? It is, and it is still interactable. Okay, that's good. We might actually be able to get in here then. Okay. Now, the reason that we didn't find the jack for that is because there was a place that we did not venture into. And the reason I didn't venture into is I didn't go anywhere near up Nathan Avenue, which I think we could already have done and headed up there. But I didn't because I assumed that would eventually we'd get access to that kind of part of the world anyway. So, because eventually we'd have to go to the historical society. So, um, we need to head up there. There is a location there which has our jack. Basically. But before that, we do have access back to Jack's Inn. Expecting Oh, this must have been where the thing came out of. I just missed it this whole time? It's the thing that attacked Maria. I guess. I guess it came out of there and I just never noticed. Possible. Just in this little themes playing. It's kind of nice, though, in a way. It's unsettling, of course, but. You know. Kind of. Kind of fits somehow, you know? Mm, that bit's not so settling. Oh, so comforting. <laughs> Weird being back here as well. Like, um, I'm so used to just like coming here the one time, and that's basically it. So, you know, it's a thing. Was that always on? Very cute. Very cute. 
as I mentioned in my first trip here, and I did look and I was correct, this is the room in Silent Hill 3 where um, Heather and um, what's his name? Douglas, that is it, Douglas. Uh, when they come to Silent Hill, this is like their base of operations, basically. And I did note that on my first trip uh, through here, that I'm pretty sure it's the room. And I guess this is your confirmation. This is the Seal of Metatron. Watch my series on the other games to learn more about that. But uh, that's, a, that's a nice little Easter egg. I appreciate that. Was wondering what the state of that key would be, and nope, definitely am not allowed to come back here. That is sealed off. Uh, nothing here. Uh, Baldwin Mansion, by the way, um, also came in the comments section, um, and uh, was mentioned about. I, I haven't checked it entirely. Uh, it's not that like Maria's like she's unsettled, doesn't want to go near there, but it feels familiar. Um, there in the Silent Hill Two, there was like an expansion of the game, kind of a separate version of the game where you play as Maria for a bit. I never actually played it, but um, it's been suggested that, that actually was Baldwin Mansion. I don't know that for... Um, I don't know that as confirmation. Uh, but if so, that's also another such. And that's what I would say for this game. This game has a lot of very nice touches to it. You know, be it... Sorry, see the table there. Be it kind of references um, to this game or other games and, you know, other bits and pieces going on. And I do appreciate that, you know. I do feel like this game... While being a remaking and reimagining of the what we played prior, and kind of a, it's a it's a new way to kind of experience the game that I have played many times and have enjoyed. It also is a bit of a love letter to its own series as well, you know, um, and that it, it does have obviously the references and it kind of builds upon the things. Like the game itself is still fairly kind of true to itself in the respect that it's not like heavily messing with the source material. There's little additions here and there. And there's little minor tweaks, which I think is totally fine and I get that. But it doesn't like horrendously mess around with it. You know what? I think that's is the correct way to do it. I think as far as my experience of the game so far, would I say this is the best remake of a game I've ever played? It's probably up there. Like, there's only... The only things that I have mentioned so far in the series that I feel like I have not been a massive fan of are, like, very, very minor. And, you know, just kind of little things that I would... I just personally would have chosen to do differently at the garage, by the way, in the gas station. Like, as far as, like, kind of bigger picture and also stuff that... That the... You know, and a lot of that is basically just comes down to the fact that I've played the game multiple times... And as such, there's a degree of expectation. I have to bear in mind that there are more people, probably more people, that haven't played the original Silent Hill 2 than have. And if you haven't played the original, quite a few of the things that... He just stuffs that in his jacket, by the way. Are quite a few of the things that perhaps like I spot in these games, like to someone who's new to the series, doesn't matter to them. You know, they, they don't care. You know, I think back to, like, my time with Resident Evil 2 Remake, which I still think is probably one of the, the better games the series has ever seen. A fantastic rendition of the original game. And when I kind of did my review and talked about it, I did mention about the fact that I... The way they did, like, the, the fact there was no B scenarios, it was kind of fold into itself, was a bit weird. But again, if you've not played the original game, like, it doesn't matter. It's, it's totally... You're not going to know that. It's just like, having done it previously, I would have appreciated it to kind of be in the other way. But it's like, it's not a big deal. So, I think the only thing I would say for this game is that it is, at times, like, surprisingly lengthy. Um, and I think definitely, once we hit Brookhaven, I do think Brookhaven Moss will probably a little too large. Um, and I just feel like it could have been done, like, you could have shaved, like, maybe... 15 20 minutes off it at least it just felt like it would have been a little bit kind of punchier going through there and especially with all the combat you're having to do and lots of traversing if it had been any longer it would have started feeling a bit of a slog 
Um, and that's that's the only answer. I think maybe a little too excess there and could have done with maybe just, just trimming trimming things just a little bit. But again, very, very minor complaint. Anyway, so we've got the garage jack, so we can now use that to get into here. And I assume that means I can now can't see a damn thing in here. Also, not entirely sure what to expect. Mass layoffs at Brookhaven Hospital friends the institution's future. Over 10 people have been let go, which reduced the hospital staff by more than half. It was established in 1810 when a deadly epidemic swept through the Southern Hill area. Uh, it is incessantly brought help to the residents of town. More and more have made their voices heard of how the presence of a psychiatric hospital in the middle of a town has a negative impact on the local community. I think one thing I do appreciate as well is that the game has kind of kept to its trends. A lot of the ancillary information about things is stuff you just have to go out your way and like read, which is very old school. Um, and something that especially like going back to how a lot of um, a lot of the old sort of games used to do it, like a lot of the information, if it's like the original kind of Silent Hills uh, and Resident Evils especially, like, a lot of your information was come from reading stuff, be it diaries or logs or whatever else. And that was how you, that's how you learned about the game. Because, you know, there wasn't the capacity for all these mass cutscenes that we get spoiled with nowadays. You know, you think that something like Final Fantasy X, for example, which obviously I've just come off the back of doing its sequel. But, like, you know, that game's got, like, 12 hours of cutscenes. You can't do that in, you couldn't do that in 1998, you know. Um, and so a lot of information, you had to find files, you had to read it, which was kind of neat because it did give the viewer a sense of kind of like everyone interprets what they read a little bit differently. You know, the voice you hear in your head that plays it is a little different. You know, the context of the words might be ever so slightly tailored to kind of what what you expect it to be. And it is something that I do think is occasionally a bit, a bit lost from time to time nowadays. You know, and that's just... The ramblings of an old man um, who tries his best not to be caught by nostalgia. Okay, so as we make our way up Nathan Avenue, there is one more thing that I want to do. On the left here, Pete's Bolarama. Now, this is a location that in the original Silent Hill, you have to head in. As I don't think heading in here is optional. I can't recall. It's been a little while here. Uh, but we definitely haven't been here yet so far in this game, which is kind of a little weird. So um, I assume we can still head in here, right? We can indeed. Again, could have come in here sooner, I'm pretty sure. But this is where we meet, uh, in the original game, we meet Eddie and Laura. But of course now... That's done in the theater. So I don't know if maybe there was stuff we could have done here earlier and it's been missed. Or maybe it's just kind of here as a extra place to kind of go and visit now. As a bit of a kind of a semi-easter egg or something, you know? Possible. Okay, it goes back down that side. I was just kind of curious. I assume there's going to be some supplies for us to grab here, but I'm curious to see if there's any other bits and pieces hiding around. Do you have a save area here? Okay, it's not the worst. Ah, there is something there. I saw James's head move. What you got to do is something, just, just pay attention to, uh, just pay attention to James, and he'll tend to highlight the stuff that's uh, important. This town's full of monsters. <laughs> Who could just sit here and eat pizza? <laughs> Very 
very nice. I appreciate that. Uh, it's lost. So yeah, just a little bit of a kind of a Easter eggy sort of place. Heaven's Night used to be. This is its original location. Hence why it's another one of these uh, glimpses. Yeah, this is where it used to be, Heaven's Night. Um, whereas, of course, it is not anymore. It's further down. They did change the location of that, so, uh, you know. Again, I think the whole glimpse of the past thing is kind of a nice touch, and it is, of course, a, a very cute homage to you know, what came before, and I, I do appreciate that, you know. Um, I think as well, when you may have these remakes, like, as you you should always give the developers a bit of license to kind of, um, to, you know, being able to change things up a little bit, you know. You should never, like, be completely withholding this original source material. Um, it's always a delicate uh, balancing act, like, absolutely no doubt, but uh, I think you should always, you know, Give them a little bit of license, a little bit of freedom to kind of, you know, take something and, you know, adapt it to a more modern day audience. You know, what what worked 25 years ago or what you did out of necessity 25 years ago, like, you, you don't have to do that anymore, you know? Here we are then. Silent Hill Historical Society. I don't know if there's anything else down here, and I assume that uh, the road eventually just runs out here. I think you ought to go a lot further than I was expecting. I kind of want to keep going in case something bad happens. I haven't saved the game in a while. Yeah, this goes out to the bridge, doesn't it? Yeah. I remember this. I can leave by not leaving. I can only leave by not leaving. What the hell was that sound? Yeah, yeah, the bridge here is, is out. And this is the thing, you can come down as well in... Um, in Silent Hill 2, the original, you can come all the way out here, and there is, like, stuff down here as well for you to, to do. Which is... I appreciate, again, that the fact this is still here, you know. Alright, then. I think I've dilly-dallied. Enough. Interesting. It's been a long time since I was last here. reaction. It's him. Misty day remains of the judgment. You know. A classic. Someone no, don't know that one. We'll see coal mine. Established at 850, made operation until the early 1900s. Played a, a key role in the revitalization of Silent Hill. Here's Brookhaven, about circa 1880. A bit of response to a great plague that followed a wave of immigration. A little more than a shack, but since expanded into a fully French medical establishment. 
There's the former director of Brookhaven. Don't know his name, but that's the guy that was uh, reading the notes, I suppose. Yes, I'm deliberately not looking at there. Historical Society founders. What's left of them? Waterfront landscape. The picture of the local area. The style indicates it was done around the 1820s. Hmm. Guess someone really wanted that one. Among the local legends is that of the Lady of the Light. The story tells of a woman who was accused and found guilty of witchcraft. I'll read this one. As punishment, she was taken to a small island out on the lake. A minuscule stretch of rocky soil devoid of any food or shelter. There, she was to suffer a slow, excruciating death as her body succumbed to cold and hunger. However, unbeknownst to the rest of the townsfolk, there was a young man among them who, having gazed into the woman's eyes as bright and beautiful as the midsummer's moon, had vowed undying love for her. Remember what Maria was talking about at the statue at the park? When she was convicted, wrongly as he believed, he swore that he would not let her suffer such cruel fate. While waiting for opportunity to abscond with his beloved, Every night, he would sneak out across and row, racing out and across the lake. Bring her food and something to keep her warm. And every night, the woman would stand there on the shore, holding a lit candle to help him find his way. But then one night, when the sky was exceptionally clear, devoid of even a wisp of cloud, the young man set out on his nightly escapade. As always, he would look out in the distance, looking for the light and the darkness that would lead him to his beloved. On that night, however, the moon shone so bright and so vibrant, stronger than any candle could. Seeing the light's reflection in the water, the young man was led astray. He rowed and rowed and rowed, following the reflected light hoping against hope he could reach it. He did not care for his aching arms or the shortness of his breath, utterly mesmerized by the illusory light. When his boat tipped over, the man was so exhausted from rowing, so weakened were his arms, that he was not able to swim to shore. Thus, he succumbed to a watery grave. Although left alone, the woman on the island never lost hope. She kept coming out at night and kept lighting the candle. The legend says that those looking for true love can still see the lady's light out on the lake, shining to bring her beloved home. While the story is clearly meant as a metaphor and a cautionary tale, it is, to a certain extent, rooted in reality, as the area has indeed seen its share of religious persecution. That one, definitely gets a read. So that's going to do it for us here for this video, as I'm pretty sure there is uh, not else for us to uh, mess around with here. But next time...